there was so it's been 10 years. There's there's been a lot of a lot of changes. Um, you know, it started with, you know, me going back to the front lines, our executive leaders going back to the front lines and starting just to just to listen. You know, we rolled out the values first. That was the first thing we did. And we said, hey, look, you know, we've never had company values before. Um, if we if we had some that were implied, you know, we know we didn't adhere to them all the time. So here are the new values. Uh, hold us accountable. We're going to hold you accountable. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people kicking back saying, hey, look, you know, this is just the next initiative that's going to fade away. And, uh, you know, they had a lot of reason to, you know, to, to be uh, not trusting, I guess, um, because we had always proven that our, our first initiative was to win at all costs. Um, so we kind of drew a line in the sand and said that was yesterday. Values, these values are what's going to need to hold up tomorrow and just hold us accountable and walk with us. And as long as we do what we say we're going to do and we follow the values, um, just come along with us. Don't, you know, don't throw stones. So, you know, started with values and then it was a lot of listening. And it's, 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 all, it's been listening for 10 years, but it was really real intentional listening saying, okay, what haven't we done right? You know, given the fact that we've, we've owned our past mistakes and all we cared about was winning uh, in the numbers. So, you know, what do we need to fix? And we went to every single facility. Uh, we, we asked that question and we got our, our key members feedback. And, and, you know, it was a lot of things like, hey, look, our, our, our bathrooms are too small. They're not clean. They're not working. Our break rooms are too small. They're not clean. They're not working. And, you know, we've grown 10X in the last 10 years, but the break rooms have stayed the same size in some of these facilities that we've grown big in. Um, you know, just cleaning and organizing the facilities. A lot of it was leadership. Hey, these people, they, they favor people. They don't treat us equally. Uh, and we said, you know, hey, look, well, we're going to follow. We're going to hold everybody accountable to the values, not just our frontline team members. It's going to be the leaders. It's going to be the executives. And, you know, one of the biggest changes was, you know, executives and um, middle-level, you know, uh, frontline leaders, all categories of leaders. There was a lot of people that, that had to go because they just said, hey, this is too hard. We're not going to follow the values. I'm, I'm used to doing things this way and I'm not going to change. I don't need to change. I've been successful up to this point. So, you know, it required a lot of those changes over the years, but I think just doing what we said we were going to do, whether it was following the values, cleaning the plants up, adding bathrooms, adding people to clean the bathrooms and adding microwaves and refrigerators to the break rooms, painting the break rooms, uh, just making some of the facilities, you know, more their home away from home because honestly, that's where they're spending you know, most of their time outside of the, the house. Uh, and then just listening on a regular basis. So they just became accustomed to, hey, look, you know, they might not do everything we ask them to do, but that we know that they're listening and we trust them. And you know, once you have that trust, like I said earlier, you know, you can build, you know, you can build uh, a metropolis on that. Um, you know, but, but if you don't have the trust, it's really hard to build anything. And then when you get that trust, and you put a lot of these programs together and some of the creative things we did, we put leadership coaches in place. We've got 12 people there. We put personal development coaches in place. We've got about 10 people there. We've got five philanthropy people in place. We've got five health and wellness people in place. So we've added, you know, a culture department. We put real resources there, separated it from HR and, you know, told our people, hey, look, these, these are resources to help you grow and develop personally and professionally. And as we started doing that stuff, you know, people started saying, hey, look, I'm not ever leaving this place. I've worked in a lot of places and, um, you know, they they treat me this way or that way, but I've never worked in a place like this that's, that truly cares about me, that's investing in me. Yeah, do they make mistakes? Yeah, but they're doing a lot of good things and I can tell that they care about me. So they decide to stay and if they stay, then retention goes up, right? And attrition goes down and that's how our, that's how our attrition fell. And I don't, you know, I can't put the ROI to that. Um, I'd argue with a lot of people that you can't afford not to care for your people. I mean, that's just not a human thing to do. But um, um, but I would tell you that, you know, if you, if you take an average cost to train, hire, recruit, you know, thousands of people that we'd otherwise be turn, turn over at 15,000 team members and 150% turnover, just do the math. It's, you know, the ROI is pretty, pretty simple.